Would you like to be able to shade your drawings like this? Then make sure to watch the whole video because there will be a ton of tips on how to shade properly with just a pencil. My name is Dr. Rocker and now it's time to draw! I got asked so many times about how I shade my comic book drawings, especially on Instagram, so make sure to check out my Instagram page as well because there will be a ton of stuff you might like. So here's the answer. All I use is a mechanical pencil, 0.5mm and a 2B lead. For the paper you can use any kind of Bristol paper. My favorite though is the Strathmore 200 series because it has the right amount of teeth. And with this method you will be able to draw very sketchy like I did the Deadpool right there. But you can also use all these lines to draw quite realistic like I did on this Kratos here. But to show you properly how I shade this way, we need a base drawing. So let's do that real quick. And here we go, there's a quick drawing of a torso, which will be perfect for me to show you everything you need to know. I used some line weight and you can see on the upper right corner I drew a little sun because this will indicate our main light source. Like I told you earlier, all I use is a 2B LED, which in my opinion is the best all-rounder. You can go very dark, but also very light with a 2B pencil. But since a 2B pencil is very soft, you need to be aware of the smudging. Therefore you can use one of these gloves. I really like those. They help a lot. And also, you can use an extra piece of paper to prevent smudging. Just put it where your hand is supposed to be and then you can work without, uh, without smudging all the stuff you already drew. You could also use a transparent piece of paper so you can see the whole drawing properly and it's a little bit easier to, to work with these. But the most convenient way will be a glove like this. And by the way, the big grip on my pencil gets me more control when drawing and also you can draw longer with these without uh, getting a tired hand. If you want to know how to prepare these then check out my all you need to know about pencils video. The link will be down in the description. But now we will get to the actual drawing. First we will define our shadows, which means we draw a very thin line like that. To define where our shadows will be. To keep it simple you can just do the core shadows first and do the cast shadows later. And just so you know what I'm talking about, this is the light source, there's a sphere, the core shadow is the shadow on the sphere right here and the cast shadow is the one the sphere throws on the object beneath. Now that we have defined some of the shadow areas we use some simple lines we go from thin to thick to do a first layer, so to say, of shadows right there. And towards the light source, which is coming from above, I will increase, increase the distance between the lines. And then I will go right ahead and do a second layer of lines, just like that. And also here I will increase the distance between the, between the lines towards the light source. And you can see there's already a little bit of a shading going on. And now I will go further and draw an extra line and I will use more pressure now, because with a pencil you are not supposed to think just in black and white. If you want to shadow like this, uh, you also have all the values in the world with a 2B pencil. All the values you need. So you can do a lighter shading like this one and a darker shading like this one with just a little bit more pressure. And since I don't want this to look boring, I will even go, go in with another core shadow like this but I will keep it very light. To make sure that it's very light, I will use a bigger, the bigger edge of the pencil, 
Which brings me to another thing I will talk to you about in a second, one of the most important things. But you can see this already looks kinda nice. And the thing is, the one of the most important things I just mentioned uh, is the edge of your pencil. Because we will use it when turning the pencil to get the right amount of lead onto the paper. If I take the white side, I can do a very thick and very light tone. You see that? If I turn it a little, we have more teeth on the edges and it automatically gets darker. And if I turn it even more, the line gets thinner, but way darker. So use an extra piece of paper to sharpen your pencil like this. And then you have a very hard edge, which you can use perfectly to do the lines exactly as you want them to be. And if you variate the pressure as I'm doing right here, right now, you can see you get really nice lines out of these. When the lead is getting too short, don't just press here and use it because then it will be too much of a lead sticking out and then uh, you have a problem because it might break. It will break actually. What I do is I, I push the button but I hold my finger like this and then it's not coming out too much and it's very stable so I can press hard and still the lead will not break. And now we continue putting in all these core shadows. And what we do is we just do the first row and we follow the form a little bit. The form of the ribs are like these, like curved like these. So we also follow the form a bit. If you want to uh, draw more sketchy even, then you can go ahead and use straight lines as well. It also works. It depends on the look you're going for. And you can see I just do one row of lines first, increasing the distance towards the light source between the lines. And now I will go in and use a second line which is in this direction. So, mostly what we do is when there are some lines like this, we, we do not just cross them like these, not the grid. Uh, what I prefer is, let me just draw some more lines real quick, use this angle. This makes for a very nice shading. And you can go in deeper and do another one in a slightly different angle. Also, you can variate the pressure. And if there's a line to put everything where it belongs, then it even looks better. And then you can go in with another line and more pressure even. And if you want to, you can cheat and just go like that and do gray shadings, whatever you like. Whatever, whatever makes you happy with uh, the most. Whatever result makes you happy the most actually. So let's continue here real quick. It's always a bit hard when you when you go away from a shading. You can see I came back, this was broader and this was uh, a little bit thinner the line because I didn't have the right angle on my pencil. So always be aware of that. If you're not sure take an extra piece of paper and sharpen the pencil again like I just showed you and then you then then it's uh, easier to avoid mistakes like this one. Um, what you can also do is when we have this angle and you want the whole rib to be a little bit darker you can just go in there and do the whole rib and then you have uh, two birds with one, you kill two birds with one stone because you have the shading you want here a bit darker and you also have the shading you want to you want to have here on the lighter area. Here I didn't do that so I would need to do an extra layer which is okay because this rib is supposed to be a little bit darker than this one so if there are three lines for the shading that's even better. 
I will do the same thing here. And you can also go crazy and go lighter, whatever is the best thing for your drawing. I can also leave some blank space right here, so I will just shade till here. All in all, this is a little bit too dark, but that's just just for showing you guys how it's done. So. I guess I got the point across. Now we have defined some areas and I will define some more because I want another shading right here. But I will keep it light like this. I will go in here and make a little bit of a darker edge, but stop here already. And you can see this looks pretty nice. And if you take a look from far apart, you can see the further you go away, the more it looks like a soft shading. So make sure to every now and then take a look at your drawing from a distance. You can also check it in the mirror or you can take a picture with your cell phone and then you can see it from re really far away because the display is usually quite small. Okay, I guess I will put in some more core shadows right now and I will fast forward this thing a bit so you won't get bored, but I will still film it so you can follow the movement and see the whole process as I'm doing so. Let's go! And these already are our core shadows. Now we need to add the cast shadows, which are the shadows the muscles throw to the muscles beneath them. Same as with the core shadows, we define them with a light line. Actually, it doesn't have to be as light. And we can go quite dark with the cast shadows. You can darken them out if you like completely, or you can also use just um, just the shadows uh, with, with the lines like we do all the time here. Uh, for example here the head would throw a shadow like this and it's quite dark right there. It's just doing straight lines but you can see because a little bit of light is also coming from this direction because it's from above, so I go a little bit lighter here. Then I make sure to get the shadow quite dark, where it needs to be dark. But still, I go lighter there. And you can see, even in the shadow there's a shading and it looks quite nice. You could also go ahead, like I just said, and do just black. This is actually a core shadow. Uh, but I think there's more to it when you do a little bit of a shading because a shadow can be lighter at some places as well. Then we have some cast shadows here where this muscle throws a shadow on this one. 
and you can do small lines like these or you can also if you prefer it just go like that if there is a lot of commotion going on anyway then you can do just that what's also quite nice similar as I did up here you can just do an extra bump like this looks pretty cool don't do them too often and too regularly but you can put in one of these every now and then and you can also go in and darken it up other than the cast shadows at some places I want to add some more dark areas which actually are from uh, still belonging to the core shadow fraction but it looks pretty cool and you can also cheat a bit and just go in with, with shadings like this but you can see it already looks it immediately looks uh, really cool and we can also go in here and use the very flat side of the of the pencil of the pencil lead and go in with some darker areas right here because after all this can be quite dark um, if you think it's a bit too dark you can go ahead erase it out best with a small eraser like this one and then use a small line to indicate where the shadow is ending looks pretty cool as well and of course you can go back and forth as much as you like with all of your shadows the more you do the more realistic it will look and you can also use more of the broad the broad lines like these it will look more realistic if you're using more of the edge depends what you like most I like to mix them up quite a bit there needs to be a little bit more darkness also here you see and just like that you're getting there similar to this area there needs to be more darkness because oh look I forgot a very important cast shadow real quick the rib cage throws a cast shadow right there and like I was just uh, telling you the whole area should be a bit darker in here so this needs to go darker as well the whole area right there and then you can decide if it's enough or if you want to do another layer like that and so you try and find your way through the whole drawing don't make it too messy and try to be very consistent with the lines don't just do this that's not good you really have to stay parallel and only increase space between the lines where needed I will also do a little bit of a kind of a cast shadow right here like that which fades out in this direction and we can also go in with another core shadow very soft one like this and here we go and now we will use this bad boy again to do some wanes like here you can, you can put in a wane here looks pretty nice and also some strings up here makes it more interesting and now we just draw the shadow of the wane on this side because the sun is coming from this direction or the light just some negative space drawings drawing and if you're interested in how to draw veins properly there's also a tutorial on my channel which you will be able to find at the upper right corner if I think of, if I think of it when uh, uploading the video or if not I will put a link, link in the description okay and if you want to uh, go a little bit more detailed with the veins you can just go in and 
do some of these typical comic book shadings right there. So there's a bit of movement in the whole thing. Some minor adjustments here and there to get everything right. There needs to be a little bit more darkness. Maybe even go like this. Again, try not to get too messy. But I guess this is still working. Another cast shadow right there. Over here a little bit. But all in all, I guess we are done. That's how you shade like Dr. Rocker. I think this is all you need to know to produce a drawing like this one, which you also will be able to find on Instagram, where I do a lot of stuff like this. So please make sure to check it out. The link will be down in the description as well. And it's also the same name as the YouTube channel, Dr. Rocker Art. And as you can see right here, I also drew in uh, all the lines where you're supposed to, to do the hatchings in. And I will upload this on Instagram because this will be a great opportunity for you to see a finished side next to the side where I just defined where all the shadings should go. Okay people, that's it. If you think those tips have been helpful, please help me out, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. But more importantly, maybe you can share this video. And what's also a very good way to learn a lot is to watch it more often. So watch it again and you will learn a ton, promise. And also make sure to check out my next video, which will be out soon and I will reveal what's in there. Pretty cool stuff. But that's it for today. And now I want you guys to go and watch this video. I mentioned this one earlier. That's where I tell you everything you need to know about pencils. It's a really good video, I think. So see you there, my friends. Make sure to draw every day, have fun drawing, and feel free to send me all your drawings on Instagram. I'm happy to take a look. Bye.